That was never going anywhere, even if he caught it. There was two defenders literally on his trail. That's the end zone. It's... Oh, my God, he caught that. I did not... I thought that was picked. That was a bad throw. But Mingo bails out Boyd for a big-time score. Okay, so we are going to kick things off this week right away with the game action. We're here in New England taking on the Patriots, led by Drake May. Going to go handoff right off the bat to Ramondre Stevenson. And Stevenson is going to get a few yards last week. 11 carries, 52 yards, and two touchdowns in their victory. We are still, of course, looking for our first after the loss last week uh, in our home in our opener. And there's another big run to the, the right side. First and 10 after the long run from 28 as a short throw to the left side. Get him for six more. We have motion in from number three there. And they're going to go right to... No, oh, no, never mind. It's a different guy on an underneath route. And he gets it first and 10. Down to the 37, New England driving on their first possession of the game. Quick pass underneath, another completion. Second and three. Bryant in motion to the outside. Oh, now he's going back around. Ooh. That was a very long motion. I didn't think that would end up causing a delay of game. I haven't seen one since I switched it up to 12 seconds, but I might have to consider going to 13 seconds if I see that anymore today. Short pass underneath, get some yardage back. Douglas. And as you guys know, Clowney is out this week with a chest injury. So it's gonna be on, I think Anthony Nelson I have in there right now for him. Yes, I do. Third and four. May drops it off, and they're going to get the first. I thought we would be able to recover. I thought we would be able to get the stop we need, but we are not. And it goes for a fresh set of downs. New England on a roll right now. Starting at the 25 here in this series, and he goes down. It's DJ Wanham with the sack. Good way to sort of slow down that momentum and try and get our defense back in this drive because right now we are just on our heels trying to find an answer. Hand off to Stevenson and I don't know, what was 21 doing? Well, the pursuit on that was absolutely atrocious. <laughs> he just ran right past him, that was Stevens. That was strange. Quick one over the middle, it's dropped. That was KJ Osborne. The intended receiver and that is going to force a field goal so we do end up getting the stop we need and new england's going to settle for three here on the opening drive kick is up it's good three nothing patriots and on comes the field Dion boyd he didn't have the most amazing debut 258 yards one touchdown and two interceptions of course but we're hoping we see a little bit more from him today He's going to take the snap, look right away outside. It's completed. And it is out of bounds. It's Ridley. Definitely his favorite target last week. Eight catches, 64 yards, and a touchdown. We'll, it'll be interesting to see if Ridley ends up becoming sort of the go-to for Boyd. As the season progresses, handoff to Brooks, trying to find running room, but is eventually brought down. It's going to be third and one. And right away, we're faced with third. Hopefully, we don't end up... Well, let's just get this first. Boyd with the ball. Throws it short, and it is caught. Jonathan Mingo on the sideline doing a lot of extra work to bring that, that catch down for a yard. We'll take it. Brooks in the backfield. Going to go to him. And he takes it right side. And he is going to find his way for a nice gain of eight yards. Would love to see him get more involved and establish the ground game. Last week, things sort of got out of hand for us, so we weren't really able to do that a whole lot. Brooks in motion out of the backfield. Boyd underneath, throwing it right to the defender. 
Luckily for us, it was an edge rusher because otherwise that probably would have been an interception. Third and two. He tried to, I mean, he was dead set on throwing that route and it was not there. Another hand off to Brooks. Cuts it back at the last second. He will get the first. All right, Jordan in motion. Boyd, back. Let's it go deep, and he does not put it up high enough for Mingo. It was Christian Gonzalez on the coverage. He had a chance, potentially, if he puts that ball up high enough, but he tries to put it on a line. And Gonzalez, too good of a corner to let that one by. Boyd again over the middle. That time it is completed. It's Brevin Jordan. Jordan had a very good game last week. He didn't get a lot of action, but when he caught the ball, he was electric. But because of that, I went ahead and I, I am allowing him to be the number two right now today. And we'll see how that goes for us. Brooks, nice open lane off the left side. It's going to get us close to the first. Four carries, 22 yards so far on this opening drive. That's what I'm trying to see from this team. Establish the ground game, control the tempo, and then let Boyd just pick apart things that are left over. There goes Brooks again! Down to the 10, and finally knocked down five for 40 on the opening series. And that lane, I mean, that was a wide open lane. Excellent job up front with the blocking, springing him free. Let's see if we can continue to feed him here. No, Boyd's gonna take the snap, looking for the pass, but he's gonna, oh, he slips past and able to throw it away. Oh, I thought he was going down. Luckily enough, he escapes the pressure just long enough to throw the ball away. And we will not lose any yards. Perfect. Second and 10. Under a minute to go in this first quarter. This is a fast first quarter. What in the blue hell was that? He somehow hit the lineman in the head. I've never seen that before. All right, third and 10, here we go. Boyd, feeling some pressure, takes off, and he's got a running lane right to the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. Deion Boyd diving in for the touchdown. And while it didn't look pretty, we end up getting the job done. We will take the lead, seven to three, here to close out the first. All right, so a couple of punts were exchanged. And, oh, we got a pick! Anthony Nelson! Stepped in front of the slant route, and he's going to get us the ball back in New England territory. As I was trying to say, there was a few punts back and forth, which led us to this point in the game. And he, I mean, he didn't have to move. He, <laughs> he just stood in place, and that ball came right to him. Drake May wishing he had that one back, and here comes Boyd. There was one play that I wasn't able to show that we skipped on a, on a punt that Boyd made that was pretty cool. Very tight window throw as Brooks gets wide open, but there's a flag. He's going to get in the end zone, but I have a feeling this is coming back. Yeah. This has got to be coming back. Yep. Dang. Damian Lewis with the hold, and that big run goes for nothing. Boyd looking underneath. He's got Mingo. We'll get down to the 23. Get it back to the yardage we lost. Second and 10. But yeah, Boyd made a very good throw to Peoples Jones in a crowd of people. It looked very nice. But outside of that, it's been pretty much just throwaway incompletion. Haven't had that yet, but now the Patriots get their first sack. And they're gonna make this third down very difficult. Alfonso Morales gets the pressure, brings him down, and we we need something big here. Let's hope that Boyd tries to take a shot. Uh oh, come on, man, you gotta throw it. Oh no! All right, well that didn't work, so we're gonna take three. All right, so there was nothing really to show after the field goal. So we now open up the second half with possession, still having that seven point lead. Boyd did have a couple of rough throws. One ended up in an interception earlier, but that did not amount to anything obviously for New England. 
As we're going to hand it off to Brooks, he's going to get the first down. This is what I would like to see us do. Start establishing the ground game again. We got away from it. We had a really good first opening drive with Brooks, and then we just completely abandoned it. Ridley in motion. Boyd going to throw it to him out of the flats, and it does not go for much. Actually, nothing. Second and ten. Another motion play for Ridley. Please don't tell me we're doing the same thing. Okay. Throw the ball, Boyd. Oh, my God. Things are not looking good. Boyd looking a little rattled here. Third and 14. He chucks it underneath. Oh, my God. He broke free. It's Peoples-Jones down to the 44. That was impressive. I thought he was dead to rights at the first tackle. He breaks past it and gets us the first down. Man, that would have been a shame to have to punt it right there. I'm so glad that we got that. Hand off to Brooks, and he slips past the first defender, and he will get a gain of four on the play. Already down to eight minutes in this third quarter. This game has been moving by pretty quickly. Boyd again over the middle, and it is completed to Leggett, I believe. Yes. Xavier Leggett, I believe that's his second catch. There is an injury, and it was Leggett. He didn't know he was injured. Oh, man. So now he is going to the sidelines, and that is going to bring, I believe, yeah, Adam Thielen coming onto the field now to help fill in. Veteran receiver. Ridley in motion again. Same flat play. This time he goes over the middle to Thielen, who makes the catch, gain a six. A quick little slant route there, working against the linebacker. Thielen may be getting up there. He might not be the fastest anymore, but he's always been very sure-handed and somebody you can definitely rely on in tight windows and in crowded spaces. And that's the second time today that Boyd has hit the lineman with the football. Mingo in motion. I mean, I, I've never even seen that in this game before. Oh, man, that was bad looking. We are going to settle for three. But Deion Boyd looking very, very rattled right now. First and 10 here for New England. 13 to 3, of course, the score. We have a nice 10 point lead, but Stevenson finds a huge gap off the right side. They sealed the edge to perfection and going to get it all the way across midfield down to the 40. And in one play, they flip field position essentially. Not a good look. And that's just how fast, you know, a, a, a lead like this can diminish because you're really not safe with a 10-point lead in the NFL anymore. We've worked so hard just to get the 10-point lead and in, you know, really like two or three plays, it could be down to a field goal. As May looking underneath, he's got it to Douglas again. But that is where the big difference has been. We've had seven third down conversions and New England has only had one and make it still one they dropped it fourth and inches you have to wonder at this point if they're considering going for it though they will not and I honestly I, that makes sense it's not a big enough deficit and there's way too much time to start getting that risky take the points make it a seven point game again 13 to 6 first down Deion Boyd. He's been rattled. We need him to try to step up here as he looks left side. Completed for five. I believe it might have been Mingo. Maybe Leggett, but I, I, yeah, Leggett is back in. Pretty sure he's down there at the bottom of the screen right now next to Mingo. And off Brooks. And he will get three more. Third and two upcoming. As I mentioned before, we have seven third down conversions. New England Still looking for their second. So let's see if we can make ours eight here. Boyd under pressure, letting it go deep, and it is completed. Deion Boyd finding Peoples Jones. He has been the go to today. Last week it was Ridley in crucial moments. This week it's been Peoples Jones, our newly signed receiver, to help be our number one while we bring along this young talent, has really stepped up, making so many plays. And now we'll get us almost in the field goal range. So we do have that in our back pocket. 
Boyd sends Brooks in motion. He's looking short. Mingo with the catch down to the 31. So far, I'm, I'm understanding Boyd is a young rookie, so I'm not trying to be too harsh on him. He's had some bad moments. But that was really bad. I don't know what Brooks was doing. He ran. I, I don't know if he got stuck or what. But anyway, Boyd, you know, you can see the flashes like that pass there to, to Peoples-Jones when he knew we needed it. But then there's other there's very bad throws. Like that should have never been caught. It should have never been thrown. It somehow worked in our favor, but it shouldn't have. You know what I mean? That was just luck right there. Play action, free blitzer. Boyd's got to realize that he does, and he's not able to get it to the receiver. Could not buy enough time to get a clean throw. But he has been good at that. We haven't taken too many sacks. He's been able to get the ball out just in time to avoid it for the most part. As he delivers a beautiful throw there. And once again, it is Peoples Jones down to the six yard line. Closest we've been since the first drive of the game. Boyd throws it. It's dropped. He was hit as he throws. I don't know if Leggett was confused. He just dropped it himself. And now it's second down. Not a fan of how that played out. I mean, you got to catch that, you know? And another quick one. Come on. You got to let these plays develop here, Boyd. That was never going anywhere, even if he caught it. There was two defenders literally on his trail. That's end zone. It's... Oh, my God. He caught that. I did not. I thought that was picked. That was a bad throw. But Mingo bails out Boyd for a big time score. And that's going to put us ahead. Awesome to see. New England now trying to, to battle back. They now find themselves with a 14 point deficit here towards the very end of this third. May over the middle, incomplete. Try to squeeze it into Bryant, the tight end. But Fuller was on the coverage. Bats it away. And it's another second down for them. And hand it off. Stevenson, huge gap right through the middle. And he is going to be down inside the 40. That play ended the third quarter. And um, the, they haven't run it a lot. But when they do, it's been very, very effective. As May trying to get it underneath. It's incomplete. Looking for, I believe it was KJ Osborne. There wasn't enough room there, not enough separation. Ball was a little bit behind him. Second and 10. May throwing it short again. It's completed. Kendrick Bourne, third and four. And they get themselves a conversion here. May got to get rid of it. And again, it falls incomplete. And the struggle continues for New England. As they're going to have to... I think they're going to settle for three here. Yeah. Time after time, they have just failed on third downs. Which is why they're just trying to get their ninth point of the game here. And they will. 20-9. to nine. But we weren't able to get anything done in the last drive. New England comes back out with another chance to, to get closer in this game. And he's going to fire it outside to Douglas. Nice catch. Gain of nine. And if all goes well for these two teams, you could be looking at a pretty significant quarterback clash here between Drake May and Deion Boyd. And so far today, both of them have had their moments of, uh, of struggles, I'll say. Third and one as that one falls incomplete. There have been some good throws as well. I think Boyd has played better overall, even though he does not have... Well, they both have an interception. Never mind, let me take that back. Oh my God, Stewart with a big run. And he's going to get it to the 48. First down. But uh, as I was saying, I do believe Boyd's had a better day overall. Not, not just, it's not just because of the score, but just less bad plays, more good plays, right? It's about as simple as you can put it. Second and four. As May takes a snap. Looking for a big shot. It's incomplete. Simmons was all over the play for the coverage. He tried to loft it up, did not work. And that's why you have a 6-4 safety, because he can go up there and get it. May, 
a shot over the middle. It falls incomplete. And another fourth down, and now you have to wonder, what's the step? They go for it here, or do they punt it and trust the defense? And they are going to go for it. 5.05 to go. They need the 41. May takes the snap. And May in trouble. He gets out of harm's way, and he gets the first. First time we've seen him run today, and it's a very big conversion. If they don't get that, New England is, is pretty much dead to rights in this game. Let's see if they can capitalize now. Bryant's in motion. Oh, they're going to get another play. Oh, my God. See, they wait so long. The other plays, they, they'll initiate it right away. And, I mean, even if I move it to 13 seconds, hell, even 14 seconds, I think they're still getting flagged for it. And I'm not going to do that. I haven't had to run more than 13 seconds in like three and a half years on, on Madden for this. And there goes Stevenson. Oh, my God. He is refusing to go down. And, yeah, as you can see, they, they haven't run it a lot. Only nine carries on the day for him. But when they run it, he is just carving us up. He's got 88 yards. There's a flag down. I'm not quite sure what the call is going to be. And it's going to be a hold call on Jedrick Wills, the left tackle. So it's now second and ten. And off to Stewart, bounced off of one, slips past the next, and gets nine. May, quick snap. Looking underneath, completed to Osborne, who spins free from, I believe it was green, and gets himself a nice chunk to the 13. New England now under pressure, it's Trevin Wallace. Second sack of the day for him. He had one earlier that did not make the final cut. And there's another one. No, he slips free and somehow throws it away. That was a strange looking throwaway. Third and 19. Looking for the screen. There's a flag. Are they going to get us for roughing? I think they are. I think they are. No, it's holding. And we are, are we gonna decline it? We are, and they're gonna be forced to kick another field goal. So after all of that, New England still settling for three. They'll put it up for their fourth of the day, make it a 20 to 12 game with a two minute warning. All right, Boyd, we need you to lead us to this victory here. We just need a, a first, like two first downs. We can close this thing out. Maybe three, depending on how they use their timeouts. They do have the two-minute warning. It's 2.03, so we have to keep that in mind. Boy, going to take the snap and immediately go for a shot, and it's completed to Ridley. I really like that play call. Take a chunk out of him right away. Make him think you're not just going to hand it off or dink and dunk down the field. Hand it off to Brooks here on this play, and it goes for four. And now the timeouts are going to start coming into play. They'll call their first. So essentially now at this point, one first down should be able to wrap this game up as Brooks is shut down that time. Third and five. I'm curious to see if we go for a pass here, if we stick to the ground. The ground has not been very forgiving to us. We are going to stick on the ground. And Brooks gets the first. That was a big conversion there as 97 is down. It's Golston. He's going to the locker room for New England. All right, folks, there it is. That is going to be the end of the game. The first down got it done. And while it wasn't a pretty game, it is a game that we're going to win. So, hey, we'll take it. One and one on the season. As Boyd is going to kneel it out for the last time. Very happy we were able to get this bounce back. All right, after that game, we end up having a couple of upgrades, one of them being Donovan Peoples-Jones. We are going to do... Oh, we'll do Playmaker. Why not? Yeah, I'm going to have to stop doing this, aren't I? It's just too hard. Look at the look at the upgrades we get. Or, you know, maybe Madden could just fix their game, right? That might be an option here as well. And Trevin Wallace is the next one, and I think we're going to do pass coverage for him. I do believe that's... Yeah, 68 zone. We definitely want to try to get that up a little bit. 
Man coverage is 70, so he's good there. But let's go pass coverage here. Hope to get some zone coverage for him. Okay, we get one to zone, two to man, and a tackle. And there really isn't a whole lot of stuff that we have to worry about. We do have a new injury. And it is DJ Wanham now. Is it hurts and hits out for four weeks. Torn labrum. Man, these labrums are just horrible in this Madden game. I swear that I see that one in abdominal tear like all the time. Man, now we're down two edge rushers. Well, Connie will be back next week. So we're still going to be down one, but it sucks to see. He was all, all last year, he was out too with an injury. And let's go ahead and get ourselves a week three. And now we're going to go ahead and set our focus scouting. So let's take care of that right away. So over in the West, we already know we're going to be going for a tight end. So here we go. Set focus scouting, tight end. There we go. In the central, we were going safeties. And then in the southeast, we were doing defensive tackles. It's going to be a very different type of scouting year because the, the positioning was not very fond for the way I like to do things. So we'll make do with what we got. But that is the situation that we have right now. We'll take care of the national, of course, in week eight. And then quickly, before we end the video, we are going to go ahead and we are going to take a look around the league because I know that there was some trades. So let's take a look at those. So these were all of the trades that started taking place. It all happened in preseason week two, of course. So the first one, the Broncos and Jaguars had a trade. Darnell Savage was traded to the Broncos in exchange for Chris Abrams drain and a six round pick. And then it was the Chargers and Chiefs putting together a trade to get Jalen Watts over to LA in exchange for Tareeb Still and a fifth round pick. So Josh Metellus ended up getting traded to the Broncos last year, I'm assuming, and now just got traded again to the Texans in exchange for Cade Stover and a fifth round pick. And apparently some other stuff, uh, a, a seventh in 20, a, another seventh and then a seventh next year. And the Broncos were still not done because they then traded Akeem Davis Gaither to the Falcons for Grady Jarrett. What in the world? And then the, the Jets trade Will McDonald the fourth. I believe that was like their first round pick a couple of years ago to the Eagles in exchange for Jahan Dotson, who was somehow on the jets and they also sent a fourth to the eagles wow so they really did make some adjustments because these kind of big trades were not really happening as frequently um in prior madden so which i like to see so a lot of moving pieces we'll have to keep tabs on this to see if anybody else changes throughout the course of the year see if any bigger ticket type of players ends up getting moved we also have a chance to see what the players ready to negotiate is going to look like we right now have a standing cap room of 72 million next year, but we are going to have some big decisions to make. JC Horn, Kim Equano, Rashawn Stump, Taylor Moten, DJ Wanham, Dane Jackson, Devon Kirkland, Jadavian Clowney, Eric Watt. Oh my gosh, a lot of players that, and of course, Bryce Young. Well, we're not going to take his option, of course. That's, that's not going to happen. So quite a few decisions to make. This season is going to obviously be a very important one, but we want to try to re-sign J.C. Horn. Let's get him taken care of right away. He's 25. He's an 86 overall. I have a feeling he's going to get much better, so let's just get this done and over with. His interest is super high with us. They're going to go player-friendly, do a five-year deal for $60 million. He's totally worth every penny of that. And he takes it. So right off the bat, we get J.C. Horn to stay at put. We're going to have him for a very very long time and can we do it with Aquano as well he doesn't have as much interest but he is still interested he's only 24. I would like to lock him up long term here we're gonna try the very player friendly deal four years 60 million dollars on par with that of JC Horn except one year less and that's because left tackle is a, is a very high value position you have to expect to make extra uh, payments to your left tackle as opposed to a corner and we'll see if he takes it and he does. So just like that, we have both of our very important free agents taken care of, and we don't have to worry about losing our young talent this year at least. Now, there are some other players that I would love to bring back, like Tavon Kirkland if he keeps performing well with kickoffs. 
Um, Eric Watts, I think, would be a solid piece for us. If we move to a 3-4, he would definitely have to be nose tack or D tackle. And I'm not sure if he fits there, but he has very low interest. A lot of these guys have low interest. So we might have to make some business decisions with that. I'm hoping Kirkland turns it around because I'd love to keep him on the roster. But I don't want to force him either. So I, I do think it'll be the end of the day for or any of the road for Dalton and Thielen. Um, just don't see much point bringing him back. I do want to bring back Whelan, the punter. And uh, Bryce Young, we'll see where this takes us. I, I'm pretty sure we're going to have put a package together for him to get traded to a different team that maybe needs a quarterback. But right now, it's just not, there's not a lot of hope for him to be re-signed here. And not a lot of sense to be had to be in, in order to do that. And now here's something, too. We got to keep an eye on these stories. Hate seeing injuries at this point in the draft process. Wish free safety Stephen Freeman a speedy recovery. So, I mean, we are in the market for a free safety. We don't know if that means he's going to have really bad injury, but he could be something more easily attainable later in the draft if he's falling down the boards right now because of being out. And I think that's the only one. Yes, that's the only one about uh, drafting. So we'll leave it at that. And we're not really deep enough into the season yet to really dive into the stats and the, the record. So we're going to leave that as it is. But next video, we will be taking on the Buccaneers in our first divisional matchup. So we are definitely going to want to watch that. Very tough game and it's on the road. So we will see how things play out for us there. As for this video, thank you so much for watching. As always, before you leave, if you hit that like button, subscribe if you have not already. Turn on that bell notification. And I will see you guys next time.